Welcome back in. It is the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs, Tyler Head, Wes Mitchell, and Chris Clark along with you. I was on The Athletic yesterday. Seth Emerson, who covers college football, wrote an interesting article about explosive plays and their reference to team records in the SEC. You guys have been covering football for a long time. I feel like it's been more in recent years where the term explosive and talking about explosive plays and win rates on that has become much more of a part of the conversation. We obviously have a lot more statistics and stuff to back up that now, as opposed to just saying, oh, we well, just need to hit big plays however many years ago. It's become much more of a, I guess, scientific conversation around explosive plays and their importance in football. Yeah, if you have an explosive play on a drive, even your chances of scoring go up um a ton I don't know what the number is but it goes up a lot and that's something you know I remember must champs keys to a win and he had sort of five key tenets that hey if you do these five things you are probably going to win the game and you know Beamer even talked the other day I don't know how much they differ or the same but after the ODU game he said hey we hit all of our goals for this game and one of the ones that basically, hey, if you do these five things, is win the explosive play battle. So that means both in terms of do you have explosive plays on offense and do you sort of limit explosive plays on defense, then chances are you're, you're going to have a really good shot to win that game, especially if you can hit on the other five. Like, And, and they're kind of stuff that you would expect, more like, hey, um, don't turn the football over, like win the turnover battle. One of the more intricate ones for Muschamp was when the middle eight, which is sort of when teams will almost go two for one at the end of the half and then the start of the second half. So uh, I think explosive plays have now been categorized and we have like a, hey, this distance of a pass, this is an explosive pass. A little bit less than that is an explosive run. Most people do, I guess, 12-yard run is explosive run. But I, I think... It is still one of those things, though. It's a little bit of a symptom as a – like, everybody wants to have big plays. Of course. So you still have to find a way to get those big plays. It's not just like, all right, well, hey, now we know we need explosives, so let's go get some. Mm-hmm. Okay, you still have to design ways to where you can execute and get big plays. And so uh, I think it is a nice guide – but you also you also have to just go find a way to do it. A great stat from that piece that you mentioned, Tyler. Um, conference or non-conference so far, SEC play, SEC games, the team that wins the explosive play margin has a 32-2 and two record. Now, a little skewed early. Sure. You got, you know, you've got Ole Miss hasn't played a conference game. Missouri hasn't played a conference game. We got a, there's been some really good offenses playing frankly overmatched teams you know we'll, we'll see what that is at the end of the year i imagine it's probably not going to be a you know 16 to 1 32 mm-hmm. to 2 you know it might not be that high but generally it's good you know I, I think we mentioned this a while back remember when ellis johnson was the defensive coordinator here he would he would frequently say um he said this more than once like hey everybody talks about bend but don't break and and people kind of get irritated by that the chances of an offense going up and down the field over and over and you make them need, you know, 10, 12 plays to score a touchdown, the chances that they screw up at some point in that are probably higher. You know, now, that was, I mean, we all, we all remember when Ellis was here. Since then, you know, whatever you want to call it, 10, 15 years later, offenses are better and even more high-powered, but I think there's still a lot of truth in that. You know, explosive plays are huge. I was even watching, you know, Akron, the opponent for this weekend for the Gamecocks, you know, they played Ohio State and Rutgers so far this year, and they got beat 52-6 to by Ohio State, 49-17 to Rutgers, you know, lopsided scores. Early in that game, first quarter or so, competitive you know they went down early to Ohio State you know they're winning three nothing they scored on the first drive hung in there with Rutgers for a little bit and I did notice throughout those games 
the biggest difference is Ohio State and Rutgers just made a lot of explosive plays because they're better, right? They're not getting three yards a pop. You know, that's not how they just overwhelmed them. Kyle Manongai from Rutgers rushed for over 200 yards. Jeremiah Smith, the Ohio State freshman, had a bunch of explosive catches. I think he had a couple touchdowns early. So whether it's in those games or even like another one referenced in here, Georgia-Kentucky. Georgia had more explosive plays, very evenly matched. It's it's definitely, I think there's truth to it. And it's not just getting the explosive plays yourself. It's limiting your opponents to doing them. Think back to the old Dominion game, the two touchdowns they scored. One of them was on the busted coverage by DQ Smith, and the other one was the long touchdown run by their quarterback on the blitz that South Carolina brought in. And when you look at these numbers that Seth Emerson has, and this is based off of the um, – um, you know, guidelines that Wes laid out a moment ago of runs greater than 12 yards and passes greater than 16 yards. South Carolina is tied for 11th with Oklahoma in the differential, which is a 0.33. So they average 7.67 explosive plays per game and give up 7.33 per game. So you're right there about a 50-50 balance between having them yourself on offense and giving up about the same amount. So you got to create that bigger differential by limiting your opponents doing them and creating more yourself on offense. Yeah, and I think this defense has been really good but if there has been one thing that has plagued them a little bit it has given up the explosive plays and in particular I would say given up some of these explosive runs against LSU that you know here's the thing explosive play can come many different ways it can be a shorter pass that becomes a bigger you know overall play it can be a throw down the field and it can be a run that is blocked up for a certain amount but then you miss a tackle or two and it becomes a much bigger chunk play. And I, I think that's what caught South Carolina against LSU is one, they had some pretty good adjustments, I, I think, late in that game that allowed them to break off a couple of those runs, but they were in position to make plays on several other runs and, and had missed tackles. And so I, I think for Carolina moving forward, we we know the offense remains kind of a work in progress. We know that Lenoris has missed a lot of time. We'll see if and you know what he does this weekend but I also think you if you're South Carolina you've played two SEC teams so I, I would expect those numbers to be a little bit more tight when you've played SEC teams versus you know non-conference games and and a lot of these other teams have only played non-conference games or have played one SEC team so we'll see what that number does as the year progresses and if you can both add and cut down on both sides of that because like you said, it, it is both sides of it that we're sort of weighing here. Yeah, it's um, I, I think it's actually going to be a key for South Carolina this entire year. Like you go back to the LSU South Carolina game, you know, explosive plays for South Carolina were huge in that game, and and they've been pretty good in that department. I mean, go back to Kentucky, you know, they were able on third down even to make some explosive plays. You go back to the LSU game, you get the 75-yard sellers run. You get the, what, 66, Six. 67, yeah, 66-yarder for Rocket Sanders. You know, this offense may not be built to to say, hey, we're going to completely control the game. We're going to control clock. We're going to just go up and down the field. You know, they're not like we see Ole Miss up here. They're probably not as explosive as Ole Miss, right, or like a Missouri but they have the capability to be explosive in a different way than last year. Last year, South Carolina hit explosive plays, but what were they? It was normally Spencer Rattler to Xavier Leggett. It looks a lot different than this year. This year, your explosives seem more centered around the run game, right? So can you get a little bit more explosive in the passing game? That's kind of how I'm applying this to the Gamecocks, and I think they need to get a little more explosive in the pass game. Um I think they need to not be quite so overly reliant on explosives. That was a problem last year. You got to kind of have a mix of it. Um, but I think it's a positive that through two conference games, they made some of those explosive plays. I think that actually might bode well. 
Absolutely. And something important we hope to see South Carolina's offense continue to do, and hopefully the defense can uh, find a way to limit those, especially as we get into some of these tougher games as the season rolls along. Lower release, the special teams touchdown contest rolls on for another week. $400 up for grabs as South Carolina takes on Akron this upcoming weekend. And just like as always, go online to 1075thegame.com and click on the Lawyer Lisa tab to uh, register for your chance to win the money whenever a special teams touchdown does occur for the Gamecocks. Roll along on your Thursday. We'll hit a make your case coming up next. Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs here in the game. 